Hi everyone. Let me pass across the time of the day. Whatever time you are watching this, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Thomas Chimezi Ezala and I'm an optometrist by profession. I work with Mary Mata Hospital. It's actually a mission hospital that is located in Isoko South local government of Delta States. Isoko South, or you could just say Ole, it's called Ole, right? Ole. O L E H. So um, let me go straight to the point because we wouldn't want this video to be very long. We want it to be very short just as we pass across the message that was intended. Now, the essence of this video is to actually create an eye-opener on pseudomyopia. Pseudomyopia. Because so many clinicians overlook that clinical situation. It eludes them. They miss it because of certain things that they don't actually put in place. Now, of course, what is pseudomyopia? Now, just like the name implies, pseudomyopia is a false myopia, right? And it is brought about by ciliary spasm, spasm of accommodation. And then another thing you could also use to define pseudomyopia is, just like the conventional, conventionally known myopes, they use minus lenses. But pseudomyopes are being attended to with plus lenses. There's plus lenses that work for pseudomyopes, not minus lenses. Because we all know that short-sighted people need minus lenses to correct the refractive error, while long-sighted people need plus lenses to correct the refractive error. Short-sighted people, another name for them is myopes. Myopes. They have myopia. While long-sighted people are called hypermetrops. Hypermetrops. Or hyperopia. Or hyperopes. Hyperopes. So now, let's go straight to the point. This pseudomyopia, because we're talking about ciliary spasm or spasm of accommodation. Um, patients or adults that have already crossed the presbyopic age, that might not that might have that might not have anything to do with them because their accommodative result is already depleting. But we're talking about teenagers, adolescents, school age children, and even toddlers. Because the accommodative result is extremely high and active. So that those are the those are the instances that we expect to find these cases. So I would advise that at any instance that we have patients within that category visit our clinic, I think we shouldn't let our guard down. Just because the patient says he cannot see things that are far, that the patient has to go close to be able to see things, it's not enough for us to conclude that the patient is a, is a myo or is myopic, right? Yes, just because patient says that when he sits at the back of the class or when we or she sits at the back of the class, they cannot be able to see what is on the board until they move close or sits at the front. It shouldn't be enough for us to conclude that it's a case of myopia. No place. No at all. Not at all. We should as much as we can try to do retinoscopy. Not just using the autorefractor. No. We use our retinoscope. So this is a retinoscope. Okay. So this is a retinoscope. So if you have been following our modules, our lectures that I've been uploading on Facebook on YouTube, I actually try to put us through on how to go about our retinoscopy. So this is where your retinoscopy should come handy when you want to actually unearth pseudomyopes. It's very easy. Now, let's come to our auto-refractor. 
This is an auto refractor, right? So most clinicians depend on this, depend on this to do their refraction. What they simply do is that they use the auto refractor to refract patients. Then after that, they go and they go ahead to refine it. Now, I this is coming from me. I know I'm not yet an authority, but however, on the basis of my experience, I will want to tell you that auto refractor, what auto refractor does in and of itself is a subjective refraction. This is a subjective refractor. You can call it a subjective auto refractor. Why did I say this? You understand. You know this in time. Now, what clinicians do is that they just go ahead to use this on their patient, and when they are done, they move over and do their subjective refinement. They refine this, the readings they get here. So to me, I would say you are doing a subjective refraction on top of another subjective refraction. Now, let me make you understand something. If you are using this auto-refractor on a pseudo-myo, this auto-refractor is going to give you minus lenses. Minus lenses is what this photorefractor will give you. Now, but if you use your retinoscope and read the patient, you will uncover plus lenses. While this is giving you minus lenses, your retinoscope is going to give you plus lenses. Now, whether you do sacroplegic refraction or not is another ball game. It's a different ball game altogether. Perhaps I've heard some people say that if you instill a cycloplegic on a patient and use the auto refractor to do the refraction. It's going to be a cycloplegic refraction and then you could uncover the plus lenses. I've heard them say that by the time you use the cycloplegic refraction, you will knock out the accumulated result and by the time you use this, you, are not going to, you will now be getting plus lenses. However, that might actually, th that is a long process. Simple. When you have a patient within the category I earlier stated, you see minus lenses here, very simple. I actually recommend we do retinoscopy on all patients. So long the media is clear, please read your patients. So please, the moment you capture minus lenses there, what you do is you come and read your patients. When you read your patients, you discover that they are plus lenses. Now, it's enough for you to know that your patient is a pseudo myo. Now, what is the implication of giving those minus lenses that you uncover with your auto refractor? What will happen is that in the short term, in the short, for the short term, the patient will tell you that the lenses make him see clear and he's okay with it. But then, that is why you see instances whereby patients return with lenses that the lenses are giving them ache and headache. They cannot tolerate them. Yes. Because they were, they were never myopes in the first instance. They were just pseudo myopes, right? But how about the implication of giving them the plus lenses that you uncover with during your retinoscopy? In the short term, it might not give them an optimum visual acuity. But in the long term, they will enjoy it. They will enjoy it because that will give them in the long term clarity of vision and comfort, right? Even if the clarity is not optimal, the comfort should be key. Because you discover that some myopes will present with complaints of headache, blurriness of vision, and eye strain, right? And not being able to sustain reading, right? And then, once you also discover about pseudo myope is that when you are taking the visual acuity, when you are taking the visual acuity, you discover that the first time, maybe you, you, you measure the visual acuity, you get a 618, then when you want to Still, while trying to take the visual acuity, when you tell them to repeat the same line, they might repeat line that is above or below the initial line that you got before. See, there is spasm, spasm of accommodation. It's another thing that will tell you that you are dealing with a pseudo myo. Now, let's go on. You know, you are dealing with school age children, right? So the best approach is actually to do cycloplegic refraction on them. Cycloplegic refraction. But however, you have to be very mindful because these children go to school. They go to school, so if you knock out their accommodation and they cannot be able to read, that means their whole class activity has been grounded. 
to the certain amount depending on the type of cycloplegic that you used. So, for short term, I think using your retinoscopic finding to give them glasses is better than using your autoref findings because even though the ideal thing would have been to do cycloplegic refraction on them and then rest them, then you now um, consider your tonus allowance or you even um, after doing your cyclobasic refraction, you also consider and uh, you also apply your latency factor, right? Because they are going to unearth latent errors, right? They are going to um, unearth latent errors. So you might not possibly give them all the pluses that you uncover. You know, you, you follow a procedure that we call latency factor, of which I might, of which I will, I will actually make us see or make us understand or show us how to make use of it in our subsequent video. Now, to crown it all up, the ideal thing is to do cyclopedic refraction on them. But if you cannot, basically because the school is on full time, right? The school is in session. You might have to delay. But then, perhaps the patient cannot go without glasses. Then you have to use your red findings and then give them. But you should know that pseudomyos go with plus lenses.